Reptilian looking and evocative of the far north in summer, for many of us we are most likely to encounter divers off our coasts during the winter. Here, however, they are often seen far offshore, and as all species show grey, black and white colouring, this can make identification to species quite a challenge. All divers are supremely adapted for life in aquatic habitats, swimming fairly low in the water and always looking comfortable swimming, regardless of the weather. Despite the lack of a tail, divers look elegant and well proportioned, and it is this lack of tail which can separate divers from swimming young cormorants, a species which can confuse novice bird watchers into believing that they are watching a diver. All divers swim low in the water, and they have a distinctive habit of sticking their heads in the water looking for fish before diving. They frequently stand up in the water as well, flapping their wings during bouts of preening, when their shining white bellies can be very obvious. There are three regularly encountered divers in British waters, red-throated, black-throated and great northern. Let's look at each of these in turn. Red-throated diver is the smallest of the three, about the size of a goosander, and it is also by far the most common, with around 17,000 birds found right around our coasts and very occasionally inland. A neat, sleek and particularly reptilian looking bird, red-throated diver gives an overall impression of paleness, being white below, on much of the head and front of the neck in winter. The back, top of the head and back of the neck are pale dove grey, and the border between the white and grey merges, giving a soft appearance and gradual colour change. Jizz is important with red-throated diver. Compared to the other two species, it is slight, with a narrow bill, which the bird habitually holds tilted upwards, further emphasised by the slightly angled lower mandible. All red-throated divers are also very narrow or flat-chested. The neck appears to drop straight into the water. In full winter plumage, adults can be identified even from a great distance by their extensive white faces. The eye is often isolated in the white, with just the very top and back of the head grey. There is also a small white area or hook in front of the eye that intrudes into the grey cap. This can be surprisingly obvious. Molting birds and juveniles can have darker fornecks, which may be confusing, but a combination of overall paleness and the lack of obvious white spots on the back and the flat-chested shape will help. From behind, red-throated divers again appear relatively slight and the neck has pale sides and a narrow, darker stripe down the back of the neck almost giving a grebe-like first impression. The next species up in size is black-throated diver, almost as big as a shag. This is also the rarest of the three, with some five to six hundred wintering around our coasts, most common off westerly coasts, although strangely scarce off South Wales and especially Ireland. The key first impression with black-throated diver in winter is one of black and white. The markings are very clear-cut, and, with a full chest bulging into the water and a heavier bill held horizontally, black-throated diver offers a very different look to red-throated diver. The head shape can confuse, as some birds share the rounded head of red-throated diver, whilst others show the peaked, bumped head of great northern diver. But the black and white head pattern is clear, with a much reduced area of white in the cheeks, and the eye is contained within the black cap. To me, black-throated diver rear necks are distinctive, with an almost puffed-out appearance, as if the neck is too heavy for the head. And this is emphasised by the shape of the black cap and rear neck. The back is very dark, and although plain in full winter plumage, will often have varying numbers of white spots or squares on the back during molting. One feature that can be extremely obvious is a white tuft or flash towards the rear, often all the more obvious, as there can appear to be no white anywhere else on the rear of the bird. This is a good and very distinctive feature, but do be aware that at certain times and angles of viewing, the other two species can also show white flanks, so don't rely on this single feature to confirm your ID. From behind, black-throated diver heads appear completely dark, and the head can seem too big for the body. The white flanks can be very striking from this angle. By far the largest diver, almost approaching cormorant in size, is Great Northern Diver. 
Two and a half thousand winter around our coasts and a few birds summer. A stocky, heavy and relatively inelegant bird, the beak is heavy and dagger-like, the chest is full and when relaxed the neck looks short. Great northern divers invariably look somewhat hunched to me. As with black-throated diver, an adult in full winter plumage has a dark back. Juveniles may look more washed out and have pale edging to the back feathers and moulting birds will often show the white spots on the back of their breeding finery. The head pattern, while sharing a dark cap, rear neck and the white cheek and foreneck of the others, has far less clear-cut patterning. Smoky smudges are frequent. The head is often an odd shape with a steep forehead and a distinctive bump on the crown. Field guides invariably illustrate Great Northern Diver with this, but note that not all individuals show it. The rear crown is smoky grey, often fading down the neck, and there is nearly always a dark collar, which again can be very obvious from a distance. From behind the birds appear very broad of beam. The rear neck will appear all dark, but due to the collar they'll very often be pale patches low down on the sides. Divers in winter can be a challenge to identify, but a combination of the extent of the dark and white, combined with the ever important jizz, should allow you to confidently identify any individuals that you come across.